binged any series, but yeah. I've been doing a lot of one first episode. episodes. Yeah. yeah, Tim has definitely been indulging me on my desire to watch a whole bunch of first episodes of new shows because there's so many shows it's hard to know what you want to spend your time on so we kind of take a little bit of legwork out for you we watch the first episode to let you know if it's worth your time what what are what what is our show we're Zebedexter extra and Phoebo, and this series is called after just one episode after just one episode normally on this channel you get to listen to us debate about movies and books that we request that the other person read or watch or watch and in this series we're going to be talking about these tv shows we're going to give you much shorter summaries of these shows we're going to talk about nine different shows firstly did we watch any more episodes of the shows we talked about last time yes we watched another episode of the peripheral that's correct did we watch anything else um did you did you watch any more of milf manor no no i thought she said you wanted to watch some more of that well, I said I was I just, going to. I wouldn't mind watching some more of that just to see where that train wreck goes. Oh, I did watch another episode of Special Forces. Uh, it yeah. It kind of became less interesting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it. We didn't we didn't rewatch any of those other ones that we mm. said we might. Well, that's good to know. Well, why don't you kick us off? Pick one of these shows that you want to talk about. Um. How about we talk about Night Court? Sure, that's so, a good one. Tim so, suggested this one. So when I was growing up, uh, one of the shows that I watched a lot with my grandma um, and my family was Night Court. Um, and as, as you know, a lot of uh, shows are getting a reboot right now. And this happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. The premise of this TV show is it, it picks up um, like 20 years after the uh, original show Night Court ended. And the new judge is the old judge's daughter, and she is played by... It's the girl from Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, Theory, but I don't, I don't know her by name. Yeah, she has the really squeaky voice. I can't remember her name. I, I apologize. You know, it opens, and you meet the new judge, and um, during the course of the first episode, uh, the original prosecutor, Dan Fielding... Um, gets roped into becoming actually the public defender. So you do have that tie back to the original show. Um, Are there any other cast members that were from the original show? Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember seeing any. Um, this is a show that... Um, this is a sitcom too, so they're just half an hour, 20-minute episodes yeah. because of commercials. So I would say as far as watching it again... Um, I might try another episode or two. Um, the first one wasn't like the most amazing, but I think they were trying to set it up as a, not necessarily a spinoff of the previous one, but as a, um, a time lapse from it. So as someone who didn't watch the original, yes, was it the kind of show where it's like friends where each storyline builds on the next or could you pick it up in the middle of the show and it didn't matter if you saw all the other episodes? Yeah, you could pick it up at any point. Um, so is that probably what this one's going to be like it's, too? It's probably going to be like that. Um, I mean, of course there was a little bit of flow with the, the previous one where there were some things that you know would be carried on into other shows but you could really pick it up anywhere is it more like watching an episode of judge judy where it's like she has a case she's going to discuss in that episode and then you're never going to talk about that again um no i wouldn't say that oh. i wouldn't say that it's um you know it's your normal sitcom where um like on friends for example um you you do have a timeline but you don't necessarily have to know where you're at in that timeline so I feel like with a lot of shows that are much loved and people have binged like all the seasons, mm -hmm. they say, you have to get past season one or you have to get like four mm -hmm. or five episodes in. Unfortunately, on this, on this uh, portion of our podcast, we're not giving you the luxury of trying out two True. or three episodes. I will not be watching any more yeah. of this show. I, I, can, I can see I that. I was not interested at all. I can see that. And I think I'm only interested in seeing more episodes simply because I was such a fan. Yeah. In the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, Why were you such a fan? What was the draw of that show? Uh, it was a it was a big comedy back then. Okay. Um, there was a lot of... So it was funny. Oh, yeah. This one wasn't funny. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was hilarious okay. back then. Like Seinfeld. Like people liked it as much as they liked Seinfeld? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Even more than Friends. They liked it more than Friends. Well, no, I can believe you. No, I'm, I'm just... just saying. Some people liked it more than Friends. Okay. Okay. Don't know who those people are, but <laughs> just kidding. Oh, Jesus. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is The Bear. The Bear? Oh, so you can watch The Night Court on Hulu, right? Hulu, I think. Or yeah. maybe Peacock or something. Maybe something. So The Bear is on Hulu. This is a show about a young... Oh, yes. I remember that one now. This is a show about a young chef. He comes back to Chicago to run his brother's uh, beef sandwich shop that's like a staple in the neighborhood. Yes. He, But he is a chef. He works for like fine dining and stuff. Right. And he's like an educated chef. He and went a, to school. And a James Beard award yeah, winning yeah. chef. So he comes back to run his brother's shop after his brother died. His cousin has been running it. But you get this very like crazy all over the place just introduction into him trying to open the shop the first day he's running it he, you see him with his employees there but it's very raucous it's like all over the place he's very stressed because he needs money to pay all the bills and he's trying to bring a new f flavor to the shop because he has you know schooling he actually knows what he's doing but people are like don't mess with tradition yeah so he has all these pressures on all sides of them also, his nickname is The Bear. We yeah. don't know necessarily why, but... And there definitely seems like there's some tension with him and his other family members. So there's, like, stress on all sides. Yeah. By the time the episode ends, it's another only half an hour episode, we can tell that people like his cooking. He's about to open his shop, but that's about it. That's all yeah. you get in the first episode. But if you like, like, crazy, high, like, intense, high-stress thing, if that sounds really interesting to you, plus they give you, like, some really beautiful looks at the food he's making and stuff. So it's a good show for foodies. And it looks like his cousin's kind of crazy. Yeah. So that might be interesting. Um, and then there's this young chef that he's having sue for him that day or something. Yeah. And so we're going to get more into her storyline. If that sounds interesting to you, I will be watching more episodes of this show. I liked it. Mm. At first, it was a little off-putting for me because it was so, like, all over the place. But as a foodie and as somebody who's kind of interested in, like, what it would be like to run a business like that and watching him get out from under all those bills, it is, it's compelled me to want to watch more. Well, so I can see that. But you're a no? So you're going to watch that I one without you? I kind of a no. That, that okay. movie was, like, it was, or that show, I'm sorry, was just too <clears throat> hectic. Hectic is the word I was it, looking for. It's just, it's so all over the place. It's like, I had a hard time even knowing where we were in the day. Cause yeah. Do you remember? I was like, wait, that clock says 2.30. I swear it was 2.30. Like, So Tim has a lot of work in the food service industry. I have some, not as much as him. But you definitely, while you're watching it, can feel what it feels like to be working during rush hour at But But the whole service. premise of that first episode was... They weren't even open yet. Right. Well, we've none. Neither of us has ever owned a business that you'd have to open and like work for six hours before you open, right? Well, yeah. Like making all the food from scratch and everything. But so anyway, my point is, I think that they did a good job of making you feel crazied in that kind of stress of trying Very to open harried. someone. Yeah. And yeah. so I mean, I feel like if that's what they were going for, they definitely accomplished it. And I'm interested enough in him and the other characters to figure mm. out where it's going. Yeah, I don't think I am. Okay. I don't think I am. Good to know. You pick the next one. Um, I think for the next one, I'm going to discuss Willow. Okay. Um, you can watch this on yes, Disney you can. Plus. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I guess so Disney owns the rights to this movie. Willow is um, a, a TV show. Um, it picks up like 20 years later. Mm -hmm. So like 20 years after the end of, of the uh, movie. Um it it's it's got some elements that, that really surprised me and um one of the things i really loved is the fact that they used a lot of the original actors mm -hmm. and actresses um at least two three three of the actors yeah yeah so i mean you you have that tie-in to the original movie yeah. um there was a bit of intrigue in the first one. Um, a lot of character development. A lot in the of first character one. development. I think the, the main first characters, episode was a, about an hour. Or, I think so. Yeah. And the main characters are young adults. They are. They're all young adults. Um, and it, it it was it was fun. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, and then you get to meet Willow right at the end. Yes. And there's a mystery about who Alora Dannon is the whole time. There is. If you've seen the Wheel of Time on um, 
Amazon Prime, it's kind of like that. You have like a group of people and you're not sure who's who. Yes. So yeah. I would watch another episode. I, I would. I would watch another episode. Um, if they continue down a similar path, um, I would probably watch a lot more of it. And as long as they have a, a good amount of action in there too. I'm trying to remember if there's very much action. Oh yeah, there's one big fight yeah, in the there's keep a, There's of a the big castle. fight scene in, uh, yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, yeah, but. Yeah. So there was yeah. a good amount of action. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll watch another one of those. We'll, we'll let you guys know yep. later if we actually did. The next one, um, I'm going to talk about Physical 100. Oh, I was going to do that one. Sorry. This is a show on Netflix. And it's a Korean show, and they're definitely <laughs> kind of going off of Squid Game, where you have all these people, and they're going to have to do some tasks, and there's this ominous feel like, is this actually like Squid Game? Because that's pretty creepy. But it's a reality show, it unlike is. Squid Game. So you have 100 physical competitors yes. in these games that are going to happen. The first episode is a whole hour long. If you want to watch a show where you watch physical competitions – Skip the first half hour of this show. I would say skip the first 40 minutes. It's very long of each person coming into this big room arena together, seeing a bust of their body, remarking on how gorgeous each other's bodies are, fangirling over seeing people that they saw on YouTube. Yeah. But for me, not being a member of their culture or really even following people on YouTube that are into right. physical fitness... I didn't know anybody. I didn't either. So it was interesting for like maybe the first five or five, six. Ten minutes, yeah. yeah. But because they do it so long. Yeah, it, it, we're talking like a literal half an hour, 40 minutes yeah. of, of just. Just introducing who the, these people yeah. are. And it, and it doesn't even introduce all of them. Yeah. It, it just. And yeah. I think one of the downfalls of the way I was watching it, maybe I could turn this off, but it, there's dubbing, there's English dubbing, and I think I would have liked it better if I just read the subtitles. Yeah. Because it's a little bit goofy. It's a lot goofy. You got to admit, that's a lot goofy yeah. than dubbing. So, after you watch about 40 minutes of their introducing the characters, you finally get to see them do their first task, which was entertaining, but they end the hour-long episode right before they crown the winner of the first task so you don't even get to see who won but the problem is is that's not even the winner of the first task so what they actually do is they split this hundred up into two groups of 50 oh yeah i always forget that part so you don't see who won the first group of 50s task it's not like the whole hundred because now in episode two we'll get to see who won the first 50 mm -hmm. and then you'll get to see the second 50 attempt it as Hopefully well. Hopefully they'll go way faster on that one. I, I don't know. Anyway, I do like physical challenge shows. MTV's The Challenge is one of my favorites that you get to watch people oh, compete against each other. That. Survivor, of course, you get to watch people compete against each other. I do like these kind of shows. Yeah. But there was just way too much of like the whole intro it's the thing. Intro it's just thing. how to lose all your audience. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly felt like before we even got to anything, my attention was clearly not on that show. Yeah. yeah. So I will probably watch one more episode, but if it's not ca captivating enough, that'll be it for me. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. What's next, good sir? How about you do this one at the bottom? Because I didn't pay attention to that one. So the next uh, the next TV show that I would like to bring up, I think is actually going into season two. Really? I believe so, okay. yes. Um, but the the episodes that we watched were the, the first one, and it's called Fire Country. And it's about this uh, young man who uh, goes to jail. Um, I don't remember why. Um, but anyhow, he's I think he hurt somebody, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He goes to jail for uh, a while. Violence. Uh, yeah. And um, he gets out on his work release, and it's to um, be like a, an assistant firefighter. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he has to, ref they, they stay in a barracks specifically for the inmates. Uh, but the inmates go out and, and help put out the fires in Northern California. Um, there was a bit of intrigue in it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a bit of... Because it's like, what did he do? Yeah. Why is he sneaking around? Yeah. 
And also, um, one of my favorite shows is Lucifer, and it has uh, Dan from from that series in this series. So he's also from True Blood. Just so you know, anybody else who likes True Blood? What's True Blood? The vampire show. Missed that from one. Showtime. I don't know. Yeah, it's that girl that's annoying me, huh? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Anyhow, so back to back to Fire Country. <laughs> Um, so he ends up, he's supposed to go to one town, but they route him to a different town. It turns out the town they send him to is, is his, his hometown. hometown where his mother and his father are both big in the firefighting industry. Um, yeah. And so this is, you get the opinion that there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of tension between the family members his friends his friends and um like the friends he had in his hometown are still there right and, and his ex-girlfriend or something maybe yeah something like that anyhow um, oh and his sister died yes yeah yes so there's like a whole bunch and, of stuff and, to and a lot of them were blaming him for yeah. it and yeah so if that sounds like your cup of tea, go check it out. Um, I I think I got into it early on in the in the after he watched the first episode, he was like, "Yep, let's watch another one." And I was just did like, I? "I'm pretty sure you watched two. I don't remember if I did watch a second one. I do know if I did, there won't be a third. Okay, I'm just very mad about the show. My favorite thing about it was that it took place in Northern California, so I enjoyed that. Because it was beautiful, at Salem. I the other thing I would have to say about this is, I felt like the acting was a little subpar. Well, Bella's father from Twilight plays the dad in this show, so as soon as I saw that, I was like, Yeah, <laughs> Charlie. I feel like his name is Charlie and everything. He Charlie. was also on. Um, you got to be careful with that Charlie guy. He'll bite your finger. Yeah. Should we move on? We should. Okay. I'm going to talk about the traitors. Ooh, the traitors. You even remember this? I do. Okay. So you, it's this is another reality show. It takes place in Scotland. All of these Americans, I believe they're all Americans. Yeah. They get taken over to Scotland, and they're going to stay in this manor. And what's the main guy's name again? The host's name? No idea. I'll remember as soon as oh, I'm done oh, talking about it. Oh, um, what is his name? <laughs> He's a... The old timey actor Bob Newhart, Johnny Depp. No. Carmen Electra. The host is Alan Cumming. Oh, Alan Cumming. So yeah. is a Scottish man, I guess. Yes. He was on Spy Kids. Was he? That's where I knew him from. Was oh. from Spy Kids. Um, right. He played like a really weird villain. I think I was on the do, first do you, one. Do I look like somebody <laughs> who would have been watching Spy Kids when it came out? I think out? you watched all of them. I, I would have been like thirty years old. <laughs> So the twist on this show is that half of the people are reality TV stars. Yes. And half of the people are just regular Americans who want to be on TV. And three of them are going to get chosen, like, dun, dun, secret dun. society style to be the murderers. And they have to murder somebody each episode. Each episode, yes. They do it, to, like, in secret. They decide who they're going to yes. murder. And then somebody gets murdered. And then they're going to have to all decide, like... And it wasn't really clear how they get kicked out, how the murderers get found out. Are they getting voted? Okay, I, I'm not sure how the murderers get found out. Um, I do know that the murderers get to pick one person. And at the end of the episode, they showed uh, Ellen Cummings sliding the the envelope under their door. Okay. So that's how that's how the people who get murdered find out they're murdered. Um, but I'm not sure how they they, yeah. they do the murders. How do they how do they build their pot? Do you remember? Oh, there's challenges. Yes. Which is the other reason why I like it. So they yeah. have to do physical challenges. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it was an interesting challenge. It, it literally came down to the wire on that yeah. one. So I'll probably watch another episode. The oh, yeah. the reality stars that are in are from like Rachel. Survivor, Big Brother. Who else is on? Oh, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh yeah. So anyway, people like that, if that sounds interesting to you. Um, so I'll probably watch it like one more episode, 
maybe I'll let you guys know if it's worth another another one. But it hooked me enough in one episode to watch a little bit more. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I did enjoyed you enjoy it? it? I did. Okay, good. So the next uh, the next show I'm going to cover is Poker Face. Okay. And um, it you stars... You can watch this on Hulu. I... Peacock? Oh, Peacock, yeah. Is it Peacock? Peacock? Yeah. Um, anyhow, so this is about a young lady, and um, she has a, a rare talent to be able to tell when anybody's lying. Um, she lives in Vegas. She lives in Vegas. Um, her best friend lives there as well. Her best friend's... Was it her boyfriend or husband? I think it was her husband, Husband. Right? Husband is very abusive. Um, they both work... Uh, both the women work at a, a casino. Um, in the beginning, uh, a lady gets murdered and, um, the rest of this episode is the lie detector girl, uh, trying to determine why it happened. Yeah. And she's being pulled in by the owner of the casino. Right. He wants to use her as a lie detector to try to trap this other, um, whale, whale, the person who's. Gambling. He's gambling at the casino. Right. And so he's bringing her in to help him out, but also at the same time, she's trying to figure out how much he's lying to her because right. her friend's dead, and she's trying to kind of solve this murder a little bit. And I I, wanna, I think one of the things that was really fun for me is watching his reactions to her because knowing that she's a human lie detector, he kept everything he said to her super vague. Mm -hmm. And... It was really fun because it's like, is she going to see through his BS? And is she also going to be able to find the killer? But how is she? But also he has a right hand man who's very dangerous. And she, right. it's like, whatever she does, she's probably just going to get killed. So yeah. you're worried the whole time. Like she has to tread carefully. Yes. So they ended on a big cliffhanger. They did. Also, they, they did. have some big names in this show, and one of them dies. And I'm like, maybe this show is going to be a lot about flashbacks because you're just going to kill off your big name people. Yeah. So well, you know, honestly, I, I think that's one of the best ways to to start a movie. Yeah. Or a show yeah, is, it's true. you know, if you kill off that big name person early, then people are going to be like, they're well, caught off guard. Yeah. Not only that, but they're like. <laughs> What else are they going to do? Yeah, if they're going to kill this person. If they're going to kill that person, like, <laughs> within 30 seconds of seeing mm -hmm. them, yeah. why not everybody? So should we watch another episode of that? I would. Okay, yeah, cool. I would. Okay. Most of this is just me figuring out which shows I'm going to watch on my own. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, next we're going to talk about The Great. The Great. This is a show. G-R-A-T-E or G-R-E-A-T? <laughs> Can you imagine making a whole TV show about a great? The great. The great. This is where I drop my keys. So the great is on Hulu. I think Ooh. it's a Hulu original. And it's about to start its second or third season, I think. And I wow. saw that and I was like, oh, yeah. I was always going to watch an episode of this. So we watched the very first episode. It has Nicholas Holt as the spoiled rotten king of Russia. He's a young king of Russia. Oh, that's right. This one. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's the guy that plays. Well, we don't want to give it away, but he's in the menu. So if you watch that review, he's the he's the young man main character in that yeah. movie. So it also stars um, Elle Fanning, Dakota Fanning's daughter, if you really? don't know. Yeah. I did not or, know Not that. daughter. <laughs> Sister. Oh. Wow. Sister. So she's this young girl and she's going to marry the king of russia and she is she english or you said she was dutch she's french she's french french okay so she goes to russia so it's very quick in the beginning it's just yeah. like she you find out she's going she goes and she's very idyllic and she just has her head in the cloud she's very hopeful yeah i have to say like when this when this first started i kind of lost it for the yeah. first probably 10 minutes because it was just like so, boom, 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 boom. I was just like, ah. oh, that lost you. See, I liked that. I was like, I ah, wanted it's to get just right too into much. it. It's just too much. Slow your roll. Oh, ease us into this. So this this show is kind of interesting because it's obviously a period piece, but it's intersurged with like modern day things. Like the guy, I think he's swearing at the people and. I just felt like there's like a little bit of modernity into it. Not as much as like Bridgerton where they have the music from the times from now. Uh -huh. Anyway, that's just what I kind of felt. 
So quickly after she gets to Russia, she realized how backwards the country is compared to what she's been used to with the revolutions in France, I right. guess. I didn't realize she was French. Yeah. And she also realizes that her new husband is not like as far from being a feminist as you can. And the whole country is that way. So she starts to see a very dark view of how her life's going to be. Yeah. And the whole first episode is like her going from this like innocent, hopeful creature to just like she's in this dark spot. Yeah. But then something happens at the end that you're like, oh. And then and then the thought is, okay, well, then they're going to probably do a lot with this show. Yeah. And Tim had to point something out to me, and I don't want to give it away. But did you like the show by the time we got so, to the end of the episode? Uh, like I said, uh, it, it really lost me in the very beginning. Um, it was just too much, just too much. But after you get past that first 10, 15 minutes, when, when we got to Russia, mm -hmm. there was still a lot there, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't seem as, uh, eclectic to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really started to enjoy it there. Okay. If you remember, I actually shut off my game and came over and sat down <laughs> beside you to watch it. I didn't remember that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, maybe we should watch one more and see if we like it. I mean, I, it's I in the second or third that. season, so I think it's been getting good ratings. Oh, really? I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. Should we say that this is based on a... I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> but that honestly is one of the appeals I feel me. like that's one of the reasons to watch it. Yeah. I'm just going to say very loosely. So one of the things Tim pointed out to me in the end with this, this is actually based on a real woman. Yes. So that makes it more interesting. Yes. Not that they're going to be like, oh, obviously completely faithful to everything that happened in her life. Right, right. But it makes it more interesting. It does. It does. The final show that we're going to talk about on this episode um, actually was on Amazon Prime. We were able to watch the first, uh, first, episode. The first episode for free. Um, otherwise, you had to subscribe to something. And I, I don't remember which Showtime one. Showtime or HBO Max yeah, or something Stars like or something. Um, but this show is called Interview with a Vampire. Um, it's based on the Interview with a Vampire book by Anne Rice. Also, based on the uh, movie of the same name. Um, it stars uh, not Brad Pitt and not Tom Cruise. But um, the only person we recognized was the main character. And he yeah. was from Game of Thrones. Yes. He played Grey Worm. Grey Worm, yeah. Um, but I don't know his actual name. Anyhow, um, the storyline is quite similar. Yeah, if to, you're familiar with the story. Yeah, it. I mean, it, it, it does do the story pretty much justice. It opens up with Louis talking with the reporter that he originally talked with in, you know, the 20 years ago version. I don't know. And um, he, he's going through and telling the whole story again. And it's it's really interesting to to watch it again. Um, I, I I rather enjoyed the the show. It was like their uh, take on it this time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's quite similar, um, but there's little dif differences, I think. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. I really did. Okay. So vampires aren't really my cup of tea. Oh, they're not. So I probably won't watch another episode. Really? Yeah. I would watch another one. Okay. I would. Okay, cool. Yeah. Probably we shouldn't say too much more about what happens, right? I, I was going to leave it up to the uh, audience to watch it. Mm -hmm. I was just giving my recommendation. It's a retelling of the very familiar story. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You can decide or not. Yeah. But it, there's lots of, I mean. There's not like so much action, but there's some action. There's some action, some nudity, some um, uh, a, some character development of the yeah, of Louis, and Louis's great. There's I mean, also he's... some mental health, yeah, issues that involved, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. You don't get very far into it in the first episode. No, but... not at all. Just right after he gets turned, right? Like yep. that's where the episode that's, ends. That's literally where it ends. So. Not a spoiler because it's literally called Interview with a Vampire. With a Vampire, <laughs> yes. All right, so that's the final episode we're going to discuss. Yeah. So Who there's, won? we're not, I'm not having a battle in this one. I won. These are nine new shows. Let us know if you've watched any of these in the comments below and if there are any yeah. shows you want us to test out for you. 
And we appreciate you coming to hang out with us for this episode today. We sure do. All right. All right. Well, happy viewing. You can check out our most recent episode. It's going to pop up on the screen for you here in just a second. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you back for another one very soon. Yep. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.